Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Coney, your art sherpa, and today I'd love to show you how you can paint this gorgeous love boat painting at home for yourself, step by step. It's on acrylic paint on artist board. I'm going to show you everything you need, tell you all about the materials, uh, make sure you're really, really in on all the techniques so you're able to duplicate this. If you check the description below, there is more information on the materials on our website. We have a step by step. We have a traceable because I do not expect you to draw if you're really new to painting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to be tracking me with one of our five cameras. And we do five cameras so that you can see every part of the action. We'll zoom all into the brush so you can see all the little bristles. And that will help you understand how I'm doing a brush stroke or how I'm loading my brush. And those can be things that really help you succeed in your art lessons. You guys ready to get into this painting? Absolutely. I'm so excited about it. It's so pretty. All right. boom de boom Now... Today we talked about doing this on an 11 by 14 surface. So this is an 11 by 14 uh, art panel. Uh, this one is Artist Loft. Um, they're just cheap and they come in packs. If you want to get something really, really nice, you could get yourself an ampersand. But you can do this on canvas or acrylic paper, multimedia paper. It doesn't have to be a particular surface, right? Um, we have just a couple wishes, but they're both very important. The first wish is a teensy bit selfish. Um, I'm really wishing that Acrylic April goes amazing and everybody has the best time ever and it's huge and it's life-changing for the most people possible. So, wishing for that. Um, this one actually came from the chat before the show and I'm just wishing for an end to bullying, especially among kids, just to, to see an end to this. Um, especially now with social media, the way people can bully has, has really changed from what many of you might remember. And I'm wishing for healing for those who have been hurt by bullies healing and re-education for people who are bullying to deal with their stress and if you're going through bullying i want to say this to you please speak up get help tell somebody um, i definitely will believe you people that care about you will believe you so i'm wishing that if you do speak up you find that strength that you're believed that you're supported and that you're helped so that you can get to feeling safe in your schoolwork again because the only thing you're supposed to be worried about is algebra right hmm. that's that's it and that's enough because algebra used to give me so much stress. Nobody needs any more than that in their school days, in my opinion. And I know that this is also happening in the workplace with some adults. So we all just sort of need to get over this behavior, in my opinion. Let's look at the paint now that we've put our wishes <laughs> into the universe. Um, in the original painting, I had just used pretty much every red I have, a bunch of quinacridones and all the yellows, and I just really played. But I realized you guys probably don't want to go out and buy 20 new kinds of paint. <laughs> So I got the painting down to these wonderful colors, and they work really, really well. I have cad yellow medium. You could use Hansa yellow medium if you can't find the cad, and hue is also okay. I have quinacridone magenta. I have cad uh, red light. You could use Hansa red light if you need to. That would be okay. Or you could even use like a vermilion in here. That would be all right. I have ultramarine blue. I think that's really fantastic. You could, in a pinch, use uh, the phthalo blue if you have it. Or Prussian blue. I had the docks purple. I love this purple. It's really deep. It's not really a color that you easily mix. So it's fantastic to have in your paint palette. I have zinc white. This is our friend. Zinc white is our friend. It's in a lot of paint lines. Uh, sometimes it's called mixing white. So you might be looking at it and not know that you are. Uh, this is titanium white. All your paint should probably carry this color in your acrylic. I'm um, learning a lot about paints from all over the world with Acrylic April coming up because I'm having to be able to tell people what color paint companies have in what line. It's been crazy. All right, we got to put in a ground on this, like a basically a solid color that we're going to hang the entire painting on. And I'm kind of excited about this ground. I'm going to paint out my little kind of watercolor words here. I use a watercolor brush to put these in. I'm excited about my ground. I'll tell you why. Because it's a coral. It's a peach color. And they're a lot of fun to make. I know pinks are super fun, but when you start getting into those corals and those peaches and the living coral and all those wonderful colors, you really, really can have a lot of fun. And that's actually why I picked this color for the watercolor wishes to go up to because it would blend really well into our background. If I could show you how you can make that, I think you're going to be tickled pink or peach. But a bump. Okay. I know. It's just, uh, it, you know, you are how you are, right? What? Yeah, that, we're that kind of show. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Dad jokes may happen. All right. So I'm going to take, this is an artist knife. This particular type of knife is called a Scotty. You don't have to use this. You could use just a loyalty card or mm -hmm. an old credit card. Uh, don't use like a good one you intend to use somewhere else again, though. 
I'm going to pull out a little bit of my magenta and I'm going to grab a smidge of my yellow and I'm going to mix these together. Now, the color should still be visibly kind of magenta still a little bit. But you can see how the yellow will have warmed it. So when I get that fairly mixed, I'm going to take this, wipe this off so it's not too, too much. And I'm going to grab a bunch of my white, grab a smidge of this, see if I've got it the right background color. Because if it's too pink, we'll add a little more yellow. Because peach is essentially one of the oranges with white in it. And what you're really making is an orange that is either leaning to one particular red or another. Fun stuff. I may have to put out some more titanium white in a minute. I'm just making sure I have enough paint to do my background because I don't want to have to do it a bunch of times. You know what I mean? Maybe a little more yellow. So this is how I find those colors. Peaches are a lot of fun to find on the palette, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're a lot of fun to find. And this will make a nice ground. I'll go ahead and wipe my palette knife on here because why waste that color? Ooh. Yeah, why waste it, right? You just get all artsy on there. Just whoosh, you just put some And I'm going to just go ahead and come across the canvas. And you can see this is like a distinct little peach color. It is. And just paint the whole thing with this peach. It's just peachy. It's just peachy. And so you can see we kind of get there. It, it basically is like... I have to come up to an exact ratio for the peaches, but really they a little adjustment changes the peach so much. You'll be like, oh, I'm coral. Oh no, now I'm I'm a I'm a southern peach and oh, this is a dawn sunset. It gets really fun to find those colors. I would hate to take that joy from you. <laughs> Try to be joyful about it. It's the whole reason we all paint anyways, right? To color. Take a little bit of time and be creative and relax. And to that end, it's the weekend. Many of us are going into spring break. We're coming up to spring break. So let's all take a deep breath and let that go. Saturday is a good day. It's a perfect day to paint. You know, just relaxing Saturday, painting away. I've been hearing reports that many of you are in some snowstorms. So Snowstorm. Yes, yeah, so be cozy. Get cozy. Isn't that pretty? That is. Okay, we're done. It's beautiful abstract painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Peach. Because <laughs> that's how I would name it, right? Because I'm that's such true. a literal person. You, you definitely would name it Peach. <laughs> now I'm going to rinse my brush out in the water and wipe it off. But after the show, and I really want to say this and say it strongly, Remember to wash your brushes out. You don't want to leave acrylic paint in them and wash them out after you're done painting every session uh, with soap and water so the paint doesn't damage the brush. Now to get the next part in, I'm going to hair dry this. I'm going to do it on a low setting. John's going to talk to you about why. It's, it, 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 it's just kind of interesting, so I'll let him tell you. So what she was talking about is uh, heat-induced uh, color shift discoloration, cracking, crazing, things like that. And so if uh, you're using acrylic paint and you use heat to cause it to dry faster, especially in student paints or budget paints, it can cause adverse effects and color shift. And that's where the paint will lighten or darken uh, depending on the type of, uh, of pigments it's used. So those are uh, a number of other factors, in, but uh, without getting into the chemistry of it all, don't use heat to dry your acrylic. It makes it soft and pliable, and it's actually the air moving over the surface that does the good work. So there you go. Hang that here. Oh, there it goes. That's beautiful. Sip your coffee. Sip your coffee. Relax. Pull the stress out of your shoulders and back. Think of happy thoughts. Think peachy thoughts. Mm -hmm. hot, hot coffee, not canvas. Hot coffee, not canvas. Oh, I like that. We should make a shirt. <laughs> we should get the store back up. We should do a lot of things. We should really do that. We keep going live instead. <laughs> Glasses. <laughs> All right. So when you're putting in any kind of a water scene, and I have another kind of little boat sunset that's a little bit like this, but whenever you're doing that, you want to make sure that your horizon line is very level, unless you have a very strong creative reason why it wouldn't be. Um, and that's because if you keep it level, it will create that illusion of water for yourself and for the viewer. And so you want to do that. Now, I have this. I don't want to put my horizon line 
right at the halfway mark. So I'm going to move it up a bit from the halfway mark because I want to enjoy some of my sky, right? Yes, I need some room for my sail reflection and all of that, but I need room for my sky too. So these are decisions I made when I designed this painting. <laughs> Must have sky space. And, you know, yeah, this is one of those pieces that, you know, I kind of work from my imagination of an idea of something I wanted to do. My mom got engaged and I wanted to do something to sort of celebrate that. I'm going to move this down just a smidge. I know that's fussy, but. No, we it's my you privilege. erase that line. You're just going to go right below it. Yeah, it's going to go right over it. It's okay. If <laughs> this is just chalk, so it's going to go away. So sometimes as an artist, I will tend to express the things that are happening in my life or the way I feel about them in my paintings. Shocking thing that an artist might do. They can erase it if I want to with just a damp brush. Ooh, but in this particular cool. case, you know, I thought it'd just be really fun. My mom's an artist, now I'm an artist, so I celebrate. I erase too much. But I know where it is, essentially. So the first part of this, I'm going to come dip. This is a number 10 Cambridge. I'm going to get back into my peach. And I'm going to grab, oh, let's put out a little more titanium white. We got, we got crazy with titanium white. Squeeze from the back like a good girl. You know me. Squeezing from the wrong spot on the tube all the time. And if you're like, wait, there's a right spot on the tube. Yeah, you're supposed to work from the back front. But I tend to want to push here. And then I end up with this like kinked tube. It's a real problem. And it is my fault. Bad habits yeah. of the Sherpa. We all have them. I'm just going to add you're just a, a little bit of white squeezer. to this. Let it be known. She's a middle tube squeezer. I am. And I'm going to create this sort of like loose streakiness here. Can you kind of see this? It's yeah. just about one little shade lighter than the background, but it's going to create the feeling of an atmosphere. Because, you know, you want an atmospheric day if you're sailing, don't you? That's sort of fun. Now, our sun and everything is going to be off center into the left side of the painting. So I've got to make sure that as I'm working my clouds, I kind of keep that in mind. I'm going to grab a little of my pink and maybe I'll grab some of that peach that I had kind of pre previously mixed and I'm going to get my zinc. Zinc is wonderful and I'm going to use this brush to do some clouds. Now these are the loose kind of fluffy clouds. You could use, uh, I think my cloud brushes for this work might be, they might be a little bit small and you want a bigger brush on this 11 by 14. So we're going to just work this right here. Keeping this going, what I want to make sure is that these little edges are up and down, up and down. They, they, uh, they do weird little things. You want them to blow into the wind. You want them to billow up. See how we're doing? Yeah. And you don't want them to be the same thing over and over again. I like zinc white a lot because it's transparent. And it will let me create some very beautiful atmospheric effects, especially when I'm going into like the wet paint, the wet peach paint that I have here. A little more of it. Keep this little bit of cloud is lighter. See how that one's a little bit lighter? All right, let's wander something out. I think I want to. Now I know that I'm going to have my sun here. And you can see that I'm where am I working? I'm on the corner of this brush and I'm making these little. Back and forth kind of scoopy motions and circular motions. I'm pressing very lightly. You can see I'm hardly putting pressure on the brush. And then I'm going to pull this down. And I can be a little more expressive, a little more loose about that part where I'm pulling it down, can I? Mm -hmm. When I come here, I'm going to use the edge of my brush to create a straight line. And I'm going to pull it across as level as I can with my human little mind and hands. Now, Nikki was asking an interesting, interesting Hi, Nikki. question. She says, does uh, the palette knife really help in keeping the acrylic paint wet? But does not keep the acrylic paint wet. It helps in incorporating the acrylic paint together. It helps in impasto painting. So it does a couple really important things, but it won't impact how wet your paint stays. What that comes from is how dry or humid the paint's environment is. Because acrylic paint, it dries, doesn't cure. So, and it's supposed to be fast drying. A dry, hot environment will cause it to dry faster than a temperate, more humid environment. So what you could do is you can mist your paint with a misting bottle, which we do on occasion. 
you can, I'm going to get a little more of my zinc white, work a few little spots here. Always come in, you can always lighten the tops of your clouds, just so you know. So you can do that, you can put it in a stay wet palette, you could put a humidifier near your paint. There's a lot you can do to help that paint slow down. And there's also stuff called a uh, retarder or slow dry medium. Um, and it's really about like, it just slows down the drying time of the paint. My favorite brand is Golden's Glazing Medium. Uh, no other slow drying paint object is called Glazing Medium because Glazing Medium in general is about fast drying, but this particular product makes a glaze and slows down the drying time. And is beginner friendly because quite frankly, most retarders are not beginner friendly. Mm. Because if you make a mistake with the mixture, you can ruin your whole painting. Whereas glazing medium, all that happens is your paint gets more transparent. Um, but it will dry and it won't ruin your painting. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm so like an advocate for that product. It's not like I, I'm not getting like a kickback or anything. All right, let me blow dry my painting. Okay. So, so you can see she's just going back over there, using a little bit of air, hosing that off. Now, someone was just asking in chat, should you use a chemically powered... Um, like air spritzer, and um, while you know those, uh, it's kind of counterintuitive. Those Ooh. are actually chemically powered. Uh, there, someone just asked in chat about using uh, a air the the air cans to dry your canvas or your bed. Well, actually, I don't know what would happen. I've never well, done that. Well, actually, I I know a little bit about these. They're Do you know something about an air can? They're they're chemically powered, sometimes by butane. And that can affect and interact with the paint. So it's best not to use those those chemically powered air dryers when pointing them at things like paint. Yeah. yeah. There are other things in your paint besides pigment. So if mm -hmm. you take Golden's Paint Line, there are UV um, protectants to keep the fade. There's some misinformation out there that the more there's more pigment you have in your paint, the slower it fades. That's actually not accurate. The fade rate of pigment is about the pigment itself. Like certain colors have a faster fade rate than others. Yellow ochre, clearly by looking at the side of a cave wall, has a very low fade rate. doesn't really matter how much you have in there. It's not going to fade. Um, fillers are more about oil paints and inexpensive paints when they're trying to save money. It doesn't really have anything to do with fade rates. Quality has everything to do with fade rates. Right. So I'm going to take a little smidge, little smidge of my purple. I get a little crazy with misinformation. Oh yeah, no, no. Ha, have you ever? As a teacher, it's my weird. It's my. It's my kryptonite. I'm making a kind of almost burgundy. I've taken a little bit of the diox, in like one smidge diox to two parts, two beads of my magenta, and I'm making this really lovely, lovely color. I'm just getting the paint off the brush. I'm gonna make this next layer. You guys ready for the next layer? I'm. Um and you can ask a question while I'm doing the next layer. I just want them I'm to see this wonderful ready for color. The next layer. So that is the magenta. I'll put out some more magenta while I'm sitting here. That magenta is very dark. Uh, it is. That's the magenta with a little bit of dioxazine purple oh, in it. Oh, that purple made it just turn. It's a whole nother green. color. Ooh, you could buy this that. color, but why when you could mix it? So I'm going to do a similar thing and make some little clouds here. I like to be playful in what I do with my clouds, working the edge of my brush. You know, I know that I've got to leave some room here for my little sun to be glowing its little heartness. Like I was saying, my mom got engaged, and so this is, they cruise a lot. They've been on like 37 cruises or some really intense number of cruises since they've been together. And uh, they're going to get married on a cruise ship. So I thought this was a good way to celebrate that wonderful thing. There we go. Just getting this in here. I may come back and put a little of it back, but I like to work the warm once I have this in. I'm going to push this up. And I'm pushing it up. The decision to push it up right here is because it felt very cloned here. Like, like the billows of my clouds were all the same billows. And I don't like that. I'm not going to have none of that. I'm going to take this nice dark color down to my horizon line very neatly and fill that all in. Do we have any more questions? Well, um, oh, yes. It's here. Dark clouding. I'm I'm over here. Up, 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 down, down, down. Let's go back up here. Over. Because I was over here looking at camera adjustments. I have to say that I was kind of being a bit of, you know, uh. Stun hands. Yeah, I was stun. Well, I was enjoying. I mean, you keep the show going, so it's like, what are you supposed to be paying attention to? Camera adjustments. That's what well, you're supposed to be doing, right? Well, some days. So there was it was. How long does it take your paint to cure before you can varnish? So. 
Yeah, you know, of so. course, it depends brand by brand, and always, always, always follow the instructions on the varnish bottle. <sighs> Do not get creative in this area. This is not the place to experiment. Um, so here's what you need to know about acrylic paintings and varnish. You don't have to varnish an acrylic painting. It can help to unify the color of the uh, canvas and it can also help protect it from weird outside things that are happening to it. Um, and it can even uh, slow down the fade rate. It does some nice things, but it's not strictly required uh, with acrylic painting the way it might be with an oil painting. Um, if the paint is very thin, uh, you know, I think it's nice to wait like 48 hours because you don't have to varnish by a certain time, right? You just don't want it to be dirty when you varnish it. So, you know, you could give it 48 hours. You can give it 72 hours to really kind of rest and settle. Um, if it's very thick, you may want to give up to three weeks. If you've done an impasto painting and the paint is super thick. If you were doing a golden open, I would really follow or, in, you know, interactive or any of those paints where their wet time is longer. Definitely follow their instructions. Don't, when it comes to varnish, don't, don't get crazy. Crazy. Don't get crazy, crazy. Don't get crazy, crazy. <laughs> don't do it. And uh, for all of you in the snow, don't varnish right now. Wait till the weather gets better. You will get weird results that I will have no idea how you got. You ask me, my group, how did this happen? I'll be like, I have no idea. What temperature is it outside? Yeah. <laughs> that's the only goal I have. So when that's in, which is really rather nice, I'm going to go ahead and dry it real fast. Okay. Boy, she was fast. So, yep. Boy, thank you for guys coming to hang out today. It's really nice to see everyone. Oh, it did not a long man, dry. Just a little dry. Like, you were trigger fast. You were fast. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get a small brush that I can easily draw my little heart in with. All right. I'm going to take a little of my yellow. Oh, my gosh. Just a smidge because it's got a very strong tinting strength. In other words, how easily this color impacts other colors. Titanium white, also a very strong tinting strength. And I'm going to come right here and I'm going to put in my little sun. See, that's why it's a love boat. Which, by the way, I wasn't going to call it that, but then somebody in the community pointed out the completely obvious name for the painting. I'm painting this a little bit preciously because sometimes when you do the next part, you lose a little bit of the heart, but it's nice to know where it is so you can put in your bright clouds well. It's a little bit more precious than I need it to be, and I will definitely have to fix it. Now I'm going to get into a smaller brush, and that's just to make it easier for myself. That's all it is. I'm just making it easier for me, and I'm going to make one of my very favorite color mixes on planet Earth, which is quinacridone magenta in cad red light it is so cool this color mix it's a lot of fun you can always lighten it look with the zinc if you put this in it you would get well probably almost a living coral <laughs> so it would take you more to that place and i'm going to make a little bit of this warm space in the sky i'll put a little bit right here you know, and it, we do have some sails and stuff that cover up some of this beautiful sky work, I know, and that can be a little bit frustrating when you're trying to think about how it's going. There's a very interesting question that came up. I'd love to answer any question, even if it's not interesting, but an interesting question is always exciting. Is there any place where acrylic topic. paint in the world wouldn't work? Wouldn't work? Like, well, just in general? Well, if if a human can live there... I think it should be able to work because acrylic paint and humans have some similar requirements. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is that <laughs> the, they, but they there even... are some really high mountain villages like in certain regions that, I don't know, people live, well, like barely, like they're always dying, um, that people... maybe I wouldn't want to paint in. Yeah, there, there are some places that people may be tougher than the paint, but yeah. we're talking super extreme environments like Arctic like, environments. Like if you're an Arctic researcher and you're struggling with your paint, um, Arctic Death Valley, Sahara. Yeah, if it was an extreme, and you, all it is is like as long as you have air conditioning, your paint has air conditioning. <laughs> it's true, pretty much, yeah. So I'm making these little, I think I'm going to bring a little interesting bit up here. I think it's really fun to make a strange little cloud bank I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to mix it into here. And you can see it brightens it right up. 
And let's come around our little heart and get this next level. Isn't that fun? You can come down here with a little bit of this light because it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now, a little bit of the yellow into that fabulous, fabulous mix, brightening it up so much. I like to just take it all around. I also like to find fun little spots to put it. Like, you know, under an overcropping cloud bank is always going to be fun. Like, that is always going to be enjoyable, in my opinion. Now I'm going to get a lot more yellow. And the, the orange that's on my brush, you can see, is just warming that yellow. It's almost taking it to a cad yellow deep, isn't it? And I'm going to come here, touch the bottom of this cloud bank a little bit to inform that. Let's bring a little bit here. See, I'm just getting more delicate, aren't I? Maybe to this side of the heart. Put a little bit of it down here. Just enjoy this space. Rinse out. And now you're going to do the fun, fun part. So you're going to get a little bit of your yellow. Woo, woo, woo. Over to your white. Woo, woo, woo. And it's going to make this like ducky yellow white. I'm above some of these little blanks here. Talk about these bright pops of light. See them? Yeah. That's going to help our little sun here glow. And we do want it to a glow. Hey, Kelly had a really interesting question. Hi, Kelly. I would love to answer your question. I was, I was trying to find out what kind of paint she's having trouble with. But she was asking if, uh, if, her, if your paint is cracking, drying, what, uh, what can you do about that? Get a new paint. It should not crack. That's crazy. That's called crazing. Um, I've seen that. That's a real problem in craft paints if they're thickly applied. I've seen it there. Um, if the moisture to polymer mix on a paint is incorrect and it's put out in a thick application that can cause cracking or crazing. But if you're painting in a normal fashion with a normal paint and it's cracking. No additives. No additives, no, no anything going on. Something else has happened and I would switch brands of paint. And there are good economical paints that, um, don't do that. So... If you come by the Acrylic April group, we have so much paint information going on there right now because I'm trying to help people all over the world paint. Well, gosh, Sherpa, what's Acrylic April? I'm so proud of this. In the month of April, every day, I had uh, what makes artists better is painting more than anything. So painting every day changes your life. It changes how you relate to the painting. You build new neural pathways. You have huge growth. You find your voice. Like what happens during a daily painting? Wow. It's the best thing ever. So I created Acrylic April, and it's a lot like Inktober. For the month of April, people paint every day. That, that's the goal. You just paint every day, little paintings every day, and post them up. I, however, realize that many of you are new and might want to do this, so I'm doing a live lesson every day. You're, that's what I'm doing every day. You're doing, you're doing a new lesson every day. Yes, new lesson every day. There's, there may be a couple of them that are pre-recorded, but most of them are going to be live. Yeah. All right. Not you like that? To, not trying to nitpick the Sherpa, but I just want to make sure that she doesn't <laughs> wrangle herself in Into while something painting. that I got to do later that I'm like, wait, what did I agree to? What did, you, what did I say on a live show while I was painting and thinking about something else? You're it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Yeah, that happens to me a lot. The Homer Simpson mo moments happen to me uh, more than you think. I'm making my peach color again. Okay. I'm just coming right here and I'm making my peach color. And I'm going to just make sure that I come across my little skyline. In as level of a fashion as I can, just to make sure it's crisp. Crisp. Yeah. I know that's fussy, but this Could is the area it? to be fussy in, right? Would, would you tape it? Uh, taping it would be good. Another thing to, would be good is you could bring your um, T-square back Ooh. out. Watch this. You're just going to mask it. Yeah, and I, I press my T-square down and get my paint. A little white because white has good coverage. And you just make sure this is level, though.
And that is the most perfect it's going to be. And then you get the acrylic paint off your T-square with uh, rubbing uh, alcohol. Oh, yeah, it's true. Or you wipe it right, right off. <laughs> and saying so just come right here. Any, anywhere that have a boo-boo where it's like a little bit bumped up more than I would like. Yeah. I can just come back with my brush on the edge. And you can see I can easily, easily clean that up. Well, you can. I would be going back and forth at that like 10 times before I got well, right. Look at me. I'm doing that too. We're just all human here. So I can, you can. Even the areas where it seems easy for me, understand that at some point it was not. I'm not saying this is one of those areas where it seems easy for me. I'm just saying we all were beginner ones. That's okay. true. That's I'm going to the... dry this thoroughly so that I can sketch in my boat and then paint that in. And then I will put the things around my boat that I need to put around. You guys ready? Yes. And I'm going to say thank you guys for coming and hanging out because one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things in the world is beginnings. And um, I think that people who are starting things for the first time are the bravest. And I applaud everyone who's come here being brave to paint for the first time because that's super scary. It is, especially during the lives. Please feel like it's okay to pause me during a live. Mm, yes. Pause me, pause me, pause me. A lot of folks watch this all through the live, hang out and chat, then come back and do the painting later, which we've just found out has been kind of fun because we, it's just a part of the culture, how it works out here. I'm just making sure that my first, like, that my, my wonderful little sale will be somewhat. I was wondering what, that, what you were doing there. I guess. Yeah. It, you know, I don't make a straight line easily, so I use straight line aids. <laughs> now that's, that, that really helps make everything appear flat in the world doesn't it yeah it, it it gives it the structural integrity it might need to seem real and because if you tilt that boat or you tilt that horizon line it all gets weird fast it's yeah things start getting stormy fast stormy fast <laughs> it's like whoa boats tilting this is this is the this is disney ride instead of the love boat now, on this sail, uh, I actually had a sailboat growing up, so I have a little feelings about sails. So that's why there's some of this little sort of designing. I think it probably came from how I felt about my sails. The bottom, I'll take this out. I love this whole little part of it. I love these types of beautiful boats. And then I've got the couple that's here. I'm really proud of that little couple because you can totally tell a lot about them. But first, we'll paint in the boat. Now, you could use black. If your paint doesn't cover very well, if it's giving you a lot of grief, if you're using poster paints and you're not getting the color mixes you expect, you could just use black. I, however, found it was really beautiful to mix the ultramarine blue and the purple together to create my darkest color in the painting and not use black. And that is some of what gave it its jewel tones. So I'm going to pull out a little of my ultramarine and almost an equal part of my purple. And I may go into my purple a little bit more as I come forward. And this is going to be essentially what we refer to in art as chromatic black. In other words, it doesn't have any black, but it kind of looks like black. And for the purposes of our painting, it is black. <laughs> right? And I'm gonna take this, this is a number six bright. Got a nice edge, it's by Ruby Satin. They have really nice edges. They've got good spring. You could use one of my brights. They also have sharp edges and good spring. I found that this boat took a couple coats to get a real deep look. So don't feel weird if yours does too. Took me too. Might take you too. What am I doing this without glasses? That's crazy. I don't know. That's not smart. Is it? No, you gotta be able to see. As I say with glasses that have little drops of water all over them. But I can see around the little drops of water, and so it's okay. See, told you, struggling with the straight lines. <laughs> it's a little bit harder for me, but I accept that that is my journey. I may come here to straighten this out. You'll find that you have a directionality 
that sometimes you have an easier time making a level stroke or a controlled stroke. Um, you know, you're not trying to be an Italian Renaissance painter, so don't worry about uh, not doing that. <laughs> See, just painting it all in solid. That's what we're doing. I can take a bunch of questions, guys. I can paint this all in solid. All right. While well, you're painting it in solid. Just uh, painting this all in solid, guys, is what I'm doing. Now, there was a question on the on the whites that you were using. Is it important to use uh, zinc white or in, when, when it calls for it? Yeah. I try not to put it in there unless it's going to be a benefit to you. Will it ruin the painting if you don't use it? No. Your painting wouldn't be ruined. But you might not get the transparent looks in the clouds that I'm getting at, like, easily or at all. Mm. And the chalk that you're using won't introdu introduce any weird color, color from that? F for the chalk I'm using, no. <laughs> if you were to use a really good, like, uh, Richardson Pastel or Senlier Pastel or Holbein Pastel... Um, yeah, those have a lot of pigment in them, so they could possibly impact the color of your paint. If you're using kids' chalk that goes on a chalkboard, I mean, I don't know how they made it white, but it isn't, it's barely with any pigment. Like, that has barely any pigment in it. Barely, barely, barely. I'm getting some, there's a couple questions I'm just trying to get some clarification on here. So, uh... Well, they're, basically the question is, um, it, so Debbie had sealed. Uh, oh, I oh, made a mistake. DM. I went straight down and I wasn't supposed to. What's that? Let me fix that. I got to dry something and fix it. Oh, I, okay. I, 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 <laughs> okay, I see. I think I think I see what she did. But I'll, I'm going to, I see the question that's come up here. I'm hopefully going to get a, I got a good one for you guys. But depending on how long she's going to be there, I'm going to say thanks for coming and hanging out with me. But she's back. A so very I'll important thing didn't happen, so I got to fix it. Okay, and that's the little divot for the sailboat. Yeah, thing. that's a little divot for the sailboat. I got to have the divot for the sailboat. Important, super, super important. Divot. You need the divot. Get back into my peaches. See, find it. I add a bunch of white to it, and there we go. Peaches for days. Millions of peaches. Peaches for me. Okay, now I'm ready with a really good question. Okay. Okay, so Deanne sealed her painting with matte varnish a okay. while ago. All right. But she wants to go back because she wants to try the clouds again. Can she just paint over the varnish? So it depends on the varnish. If it's just a regular acrylic varnish, you should be able to go over it. So read the label there. Check yeah. it. Yeah. Um, certain varnishes, are they don't adhere well with the paint is all it is, and you may struggle. You may have to, you know... Prep the surface in some way. But you should be able to go back. You'll just find, like, it can have a little trouble wanting to stick. You know how they do. I do. So you want to just make sure that the acrylic that, or the uh, varnish that you're using is safe to put, to have more layers put on. And yeah, and that'll be right you. there on the label. It'll, it'll tell you. Like, if it's got some craziness going on in general, it will tell you. But, like, I can't always say that because, like, maybe use floor varnish. And there may be a specialty And I don't varnish. know you use floor varnish. Right. And I'm like, yeah, sure, because I figure you used art varnish. Don't use floor varnish. And where you're at in the world, your the, the standard varnish that they make may be different than the standard it's varnishes hot. that we make here. So it you really need to check with your manufacturer. Yeah, I'm not at all deferring or not lacking no. knowledge in this area. It really is that I've just learned. Varnish is one of those things you've got to read those labels because they chemistry. can be very different. There's a lot of chemistry. Yeah, a lot of chemistry. I'm just painting in that shape. My shape. My shape. My shape. My shape. I love my shape. Some shape. There we and you just want to get this to you're very happy with it. Mm -hmm. That That's the whole purpose. You just need to be happy with it. I'm happy with it when it has a few coats. So those are all really good questions. I know varnish is one of those topics that's just super stressful for everybody. It is. But remember, you don't have to varnish. It's true. Varnishing. You varnish for a reason. 
It's a like lot of- isolation coat. You don't have to isolation coat. You isolation coat for a reason. There is reasons to isolation coat. And those are generally beyond the reasons we would need in our first one to three hoot paintings. Well, three hoots, well, I, you could isolation Some, coat, yeah, but yeah. probably not. <laughs> it's just... All right, I'm going to make a straight line. Wish me luck. Okay, I can't... I... You know how I am. I know. Okay. The little peoples. You guys interested to see how the little peoples go I in? I am interested in the little peoples. So I have here a very small brush. I just got to grab one of my very small brushes. It doesn't really matter what small brush in particular. Uh, this is a number. Um, it's the three over zero. It's in my detail line. It's the smaller of the two details. I think I must have the testing brush or something. <laughs> So the first thing that I'm going to do is there's a there's a guy sitting kind of further to the back, mm. you know, and so he's got his little back kind of hunched, and I, I like to to show that the shoulders are going forward. I'm going to add a little ball for a head. Remember, we're human beings are about eight to six balls, eight to six heads, kind of their deal. <laughs> But this is like a little bean man. Anyone who's done bean man with me, just do bean man. Just make little bean man. people like figures. Yeah, very loose, far away figures. Now, I do kind of put a little slope in here, maybe that's sort of the shoulder, and then I angle in this sort of is like the knee. And then I did really get a little cheeky and make some hair. Blowing. As you know, sailing. What I would say about the hair is that you may, of, of the places in your painting that you might have some weird feelings about, hmm. the hair could be one of those places because you'll be like, my hair looks crazy. Well, sailing. Somebody ever says to you, the hair looks crazy. You'd be like, sailing. We're that's enough. If they knew anything about sailing, they'd know that's like crazy hair, don't care. Sailing. Now, the lady that's with the gentleman, yeah, tomorrow. she's in an interesting position. She is leaning forward. Got a little shoulder coming here. All right, little shoulder there popping out. And then I gave her a little, some little legs coming forward. So they have sort of that very romantic couple space going, don't they? Yeah. And I'm going to give her a little, a little bit of a head. It's, it's not romantic if she's missing a head. <laughs> That's a very sad boat. That's like Dexter's boat if she's missing a head. <laughs> and we don't want to paint Dexter's boat. <laughs> All right. Now, Dark to, Sherpa. <laughs> to get, I mean, I could. All right. I get it from my mother. I'm going to just bring back some blowing hair. You can give her a ponytail, whatever hairstyle you want. Her hair is like just blowing for me. And there we go. That's my little couple in the boat. All right. I'm going to ask Honey to reheat my coffee. Honey? Mm. Honey? Heat my coffee. Okay. Okay. All right. Are you guys doing good? I think so. Pretty. It's a pretty nice two hooter, right? Yeah. So now I'm going to put in some of the values, some of the reflections, some of that stuff that's going on. And I'm going to work that really between these two brushes probably. And that's because I'm going to be building the light reflection. I don't put in all the purples before I get these yellows in simply because it will gray the yellow and it will take away the gemmy reflection nature of it. So I don't want to do that. So I'm not gonna. And I'm going to get to my clean paint water because purple will make my yellow gray and I want bright, 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 bright colors. So I'm going to take out a little bit of this cad yellow and some of my uh, white. And we are going to make a line coming forward from back here. Little dashes. Little dashes when they're far away. They'll be smaller and a little bit closer together, okay? So that's really interesting. This is a, a so for folks 
there's there's a very interesting question that seems at first like it probably is, is something that you would unless you've been on a boat that's like a sailboat that really moves you wouldn't understand this mm -hmm. but so a sailboat is pushed by wind mm -hmm. so you would think that the wind that's coming from behind would be pushing her hair forward you know push because it's pushing the boat but in fact the the sail is so big and catches so much wind that you're going so fast forward that your hair blows the other direction really I mean, I just painted it how I liked it, but it's good to know that's true. I've seen, it's happened for me that way. I've been in boats where, like, I'm going so fast forward that, like, the wind was, for like... For me, the <sighs> wind is, like, the hair goes forward, the hair goes back, the hair yeah. is all in my face. <laughs> that's but my boat experience. That's, I just, been, that's been my boat experience. So I guess, I, th I guess what it is is that there's a lot of different boat experiences. That you could have? Yeah. So, I guess... To all valid experiences on a boat, we salute you. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking that, I don't know. That, I don't know. That really came from more like my feeling of that memory of having my hair blown all over my face. Yeah. So, I'm going to go to my bigger brush when I'm working down here because these strokes are stronger and bigger. And then I'll get into my little brush where they need to be tinier and smaller. I'm going to load up a little bit of the yellow onto my brush and then some of that white. I like to mix them together a bit. Loosely, though. And I'm going to just come here and make these little dashes. Now, up front, closer to me, it'll be wider. And I try to ripple the water. And do all that. Did somebody, somebody was like, that's not the way the hair, go, the hair goes. So, no, it was like, this is really awesome. Because a whole bunch of sailors like, they're tacking into the wind. And you know, it's like. They, they may be. Maybe they are. I didn't have a way to paint the, the hair right in the face. <laughs> this is the danger of painting boat, car, or astronomy paintings. That generally passionate people are going to look at that and go. That boat could not float. <laughs> so it was real funny with the two girls. I got some hair commentary too. Like the hair would blow that way. And I'm like, it's a, it, like that one started with the reference photo. So clearly it did. <laughs> <laughs> and man, that's the hard thing about paintings is that you can paint something that you've gotten a photo of, but it will never look real. Yeah. You, and you have, to you have to learn that eye for what will make a painting and what won't translate because it doesn't have enough detailed inform information for our brain to say, oh, yeah, that's real. To suspend the disbelief. Well, and they may be just sort of like kind of chilling here and their hair may be blowing. We don't know. This might be picking spot. That's right. And it could just be all blowing because there's not a little wake behind them. That's right. This could be just. I had There's to make a, this a peaceful sa sail because this is my mom's love boat. <laughs> what is to be happy? We're, we're picking apart the physics of your universe here. Clearly, this is the, the, the heart mom's shaped. Love boat. It's my mom's love boat. Right. The heart shaped sun clearly <laughs> does not affect the physics of this world. I love that. That's the thing that'll happen to you in painting when you're out there. Like, you'll have some really crazy thing in your painting, and somebody will be like, you know, that's wrong. And you're like, but the flying elephant's okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever helps you feel all right in the morning. Horses don't bend their neck like that. Really. And elephants have big butterfly ears. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is always fun to see what happens. You know, our relationship to painting is very interesting. So can you guys see how some of these strokes had a little bit of white in them and then felt like brighter? reflections i'm gonna bring some of this back and maybe you know just make sure that this is a little bit kind of more of a defined light path i gotta i gotta move robocam to your left okay no that's what, you're okay but i just we're gonna move some now, robocam i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna rinse out my brush a little bit and i'm gonna get some white and it's all right that there's a little yellow in it and it's all right that we're going to be going into some wet yellow and we're going to just make sure that there's a bright little bit of twinkling happening here and that's twinkling. the highlight of the yeah, water that's like the hot spot that the sun is hitting pew, pew. we're making that fun hot spot every painting should have a hot spot those sparkles that 
or in the back of your eyes. Pretty cool. I like it. It looks really nice. Really now, nice. Well, we still have our dark color wet enough to do anything about. What basically is going to happen is this part of the boat is going to come and this part of the boat is going to come and there'll be like a little bit of a peach sliver here and then we're going to see the dark shadow. And it's as long as it is because the sun is low. So I did use some. And the sun is low is because it's bringing love. That's right. Well, that's actually kind of meaningful, actually. I mean, I don't mean to be weird, but, you know, it actually does relate to their particular relationship because they found this at that time of their life. Oh. Wow. See? Not, not at, you know, the sunset. Love at the sunset. It felt meaningful. But the party goes till midnight. That's right. Well, they better party till midnight. I'm very attached. <laughs> All right. I might bring a little bit of his little shadow out here. See how I do? Talk about her shadow a little bit strongly. I'm just making these little dashes. They're just like little ripples of this dark, dark color. We're okay with it, right? Yeah. Yes, we are. I like the little splashy, splashy dashes that you're doing. Is that accurate? Yeah, they're little splashy, splashy, dashy, dashies. I'll bring them here. You guys enjoy your dashy, dashies. Breathe in. Breathe out. And you have to relax into your dashy, dashies. Don't be tense, Dasher. <laughs> gotta, gotta relax into the dash, right? I gotta relax into my dash. Dash, dash. No, it's kind of important to keep these levelish, huh? It is very important to keep these levelish. If you let them get to the angle or they got crosshatchy, it would not look like a reflection in the water anymore. Then it starts looking like fish or other boats have driven by and something. Something other than what you're trying to make. It can look little. Oh, did you just see some blue there? Mm -hmm. No, it's that. It's the purple blue mix that we made from earlier. Ah. It's the same color as up as in the boat. Again, don't not do the painting though because you don't have zinc white. Do it. Enjoy it. Get the values right. It's still going to be a good painting. If you can mm -hmm. get zinc white at your local art store, do it. And there's a lot of cheap options. Remember to look for mixing white. I've seen it even in craft paint lines. So it's out there. It's out there. Like the truth. <laughs> Mulder and Scully is out there. Zinc white is out there. <laughs> the zinc white is out there. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me want to make a spoof shirt of X-Files, but with zinc white. <laughs> See, just little. I try to break them up, right? If I see areas where they're too repetitive, I'll try to ripple the water and take out some of them longer and some of them shorter. I mean, not like too crazy far away from where they are, but. Those are. Those are quiet dashes now. Yeah, I got I got relaxed. You did. You, I did. I'm sorry, guys. I got relaxed. You 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 totally. Azid. <laughs> you did. You got. You it's got, relaxing. I don't know what's. Going it on. happens. You know. You add a little bit of you know piano, and it'd be like da, super da, fun and <laughs> relaxing. It really is. If that if that co-host would <laughs> just stop talking, I could fall asleep. Yuppers. All right. <laughs> So now I'm going to paint in some of the ocean color, some of the darkness, some of the lightness. It's actually going to come together really fast from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's still some dashy fiddliness, but there's a lot of fun. So I still have some of this sort of warmed up, slightly warmed up magenta. Over here, right? And I can lighten it with my titanium white. And I can go ahead and come here a little darker than that. Back and forth. Look at that. 
uh, coming back with purple, but you got to give the you got to give the water some personality. Have fun. So see, that's a little that's magenta, a little bit of yellow. It's still very much the magenta and some titanium white. Into the purples, I'll get more into the zincs, but you could use titanium white, and that'll be okay too. I like to come up into spaces within the dashes that I made just to blend things in. You can even come to the side. See, if I go to the side, I can make a large area of little water reflections. And then on the edge, I make small areas of little water reflections. Aren't I funny? Always. We'll do them here. Look at that. So the water is a fluid rippling mirror and it reflects the sky and what's above it. Is that philosophical? No, it's like a thing it does. But it's also philosophical. Because, you know, our, our incredible relationship to water is really amazing, isn't it? It it date back it dates back a few years. We're very fond of it on this planet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tends to be one of those ever-present kind yeah. of things. And when you don't have it, it's really, really tragic. It's a resource we should not take for granted. We'll send light and love to all of those who are struggling with a limited water supply right now on planet Earth and hope that these problems get solved and, imminently. And a little love for those who are stuck on Arrakis. <laughs> yes. I think they're fine. Furman warriors are fine. They'll, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll drink good. each other's water. They got a plan. <laughs> Just, you got to not worry about the Fremen. <laughs> They've worked that out. You can see I'm just bringing this around places, aren't I? Isn't that fun? Yeah. Look at those dashes. You know, look at that. Look at that fun. If I get on an angle anywhere, I'll come by and like straighten it up. But I don't want any angles. But it certainly creates some dimensionality. Dimensionality. I just like getting into this little color mix. Being playful. So you can see we're having some of that color mix is very helpful, isn't it? That's, that is one thing that will help you is you can get a large amount of the color made so you're not having to remake it every few seconds. I am going to keep the, like some of the strong darker colors to the edges so that you'll see me sort of focusing some of them there. But I'm always going to want to pull them in and out of what's happening in my water. And sometimes you'll see me back up and move up my brush. This is what a long handle brush is for is for me to see a little bit of distance from my canvas and be able to see my painting a little more accurately. If you're at a table, you're going to want to paint with a short handle brush or you might poke your eye. And I do realize that my brushes all came in long handle and you guys have feelings about that. <laughs> <sighs> they do well, maybe we'll do short handle line. I'd like to. So would Twix, apparently. She's agreeing. Is she agreeing with me? You can see I just worked this through here. And, and this is going to create those, like, like levels and layers. I think she's under that desk. Under the she table here. She's so cute. I can hear a little jingle. She has a little bell, and it's her bell. And um, she gets really upset, like, if it has to come off for grooming. Because it's her bell. It's her jingle. I don't know if your dog's like that at all, but our dog just lo like loves her little jingle. Don't take my bell. I heard you mention my bell. Nobody gets my bell. <laughs> if you hear little bits of twigs out there, that's what it is. There we go. Isn't that fun? No. I'm going to rinse this out. I'm going to put out a little more purple, a little more dioxazine. Dioxazine. A little more dox purple. 
And we're going to make some fun different little colors. So the first one, I'm going to take a bunch of my little magenta over to my dock. And I'm going to mix up that nice, it's purple, but it's warmed up. And I'm going to get some zinc into that. See that? Yep. It leaves it the color it is and just lightens it. So it doesn't change the hue. That's what we're talking about. If we're not changing the hue, you can use titanium white if you don't have zinc. Your painting will not explode. It'll leave a little spot where maybe the dark, dark colors aren't there yet. I'm just going to go through. You know, be playful. You need a little more purple into it, get a little more purple into it. <laughs> you had a very topical question come up. All right. I'll say, Let's hear the topical you. question. Well, it's... Uh, Henry was asking if we're going to... if we've, Have we ever thought about having a merch store? And we're, we've tried multiple times to do different merch stores, and we've just not been able to find a good enough quality, but we've reached out to a potential partner, and we're there's a couple different ideas we have, but we're going to try to figure out a solution that gets you guys good product from sources that we can back in a sustainable methodology. In a timely fashion and a and, reasonable and, price. Yeah, that doesn't rely on oh, us and shipping. and it's globally friendly. Yeah, so really it's this very complex solution of we want to make sure that we can do it right and not just do it mm -hmm. so and that's it's very hard to make sure that we can produce product that we can sleep with or sleep yeah what does that even mean well i mean like i don't want to produce sleep product with. i don't want to produce product that i can't sleep at night that we've made that we put yeah. out in the world it just oh it stresses me out you know and if I can't sleep with the fact that I've produced it, then I don't feel like I can, you know, back it. And I really enjoy all the products that we've made so far, and I want to keep that up. So that's why we're working hard on getting merch right. Does that make sense? It does make sense, and I'm so glad you're minded like that. We really think about those things. And we've said no to certain opportunities because we didn't feel like they were right for us. And really, essentially, what that means is right for you guys. Mm. And we've got to be right for you guys. I just can't put it in front of you because they send me some free stuff. But we do have lots of cool stuff coming. Soon. We do. And <laughs> just stay tuned. We're working hard on making good stuff. But we'll, when it comes, you'll know that it'll be good. Like the soap. It's so good and it's so close. But I'm not supposed to tell you guys too much about it. Really? Well. Because you just did. I leaked. I, my enthusiasm. Shh. No one else tell anyone else. Except when you share the video, but shh, it's our secret. Tell everyone you know. All right. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. That's a nice layer. Let's get another layer. Let's take a little more of our magenta into our docks. Mix those up. Now let's get some titanium white. That's very interesting. Look at that wonderful color. And you certainly see that a few places around the painting, don't you? Just back and forth. <laughs> they want to, they're, they're. They're, try they're squeezing me for information on the soap. Oh, like, here's the deal on soap. It is fantastic. I've got my mom hooked. I've got all my art friends hooked. It's soap dries slowly. <laughs> but it dries truth. really slowly, especially if you have to make it by hand. And working with a boutique supplier who... Who gets you know, it. And we, we, have, we have to learn how much soap you guys can consume because we don't want to end up with a warehouse full of soap. Yeah. You know, so... How much soap does a soap maker, what do they do, what do they call it? There's a thing where they know. put the chemicals together and then it makes a cool hardened paste and they call it something, but I forgot it. Are oh. you guys seeing how I'm going around the canvas with these different colors? Mm -hmm. Are you guys having an easy time seeing how they're going, where they're going? It's going to be much lighter back here. So all the, like a lot of this is going to be much more forward. 
And I come into that, but not all the way into it, because as you can see, anywhere that purple gets with the yellow, it grays out. So that is why we went ahead and went to the trouble of doing all that early, 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 early paint. I'm being a little more rambly with you today because you're kind of doing some repetitive painting. Oh, my goodness. This, this is where time lapse comes in, right? Where I can be like, dash around a lot. We, we should like, uh, you know how they do this on those live morning television yeah, shows? Yeah, that's. I keep saying we got to Martha Stewart this. We're like, I <laughs> paint like six of them and we're just like, and then you're here. <laughs> and then we just pull one out and it's like, and you've done it. We, that, do that, this. We like spending time with you guys. And so it hopefully would, you like the chatting and the... We we just got to thinking about it like well if if we if we did all of that we felt like we were just sort of robbing everyone of time that we wanted to spend here goofing off and chatting anyway and we could it it just didn't seem to be the right way for us to approach this so but we that like doesn't do it mean we'll never do it it doesn't mean we won't ever we try do. crazy things we do we can but do it you for the know. majority of it this seems to be pretty fun where we show you every step of the way, and you can ask questions if you need to. Yeah. And know that we're going to do it again and now, again. in Acrylic April, these those lessons will be shorter because it's very fatiguing. So we're gonna, I'm going to create some time caps for myself so the lessons don't go any longer. I'm thinking I'm going to put it at 45 minutes, but we'll see. Um, but I think that's, like, the longest I'd like the lessons to go because we're supposed to be painting very fresh, very loose. We're not supposed to be worrying a lot of things. I'm going to bring this purple back here. Much stronger through here. So those should be like in and outs. They're, they're like little mini painting workouts, I guess. How we should think of them. Yeah. I'm going to put a bunch of this to the... I like the, the side of it being a little more purple. That's what I'm doing there. Sometimes I grab zinc. Sometimes I grab titanium. I'm just trying to keep that sort of... There's a there's a there's this thing that happens in water where there's so many values. And you want to keep that going. All right. Last one. The last color. So we have a little bit of the sky color left. All right? We're going to get a little bit of our titanium white there and mix that in. Well, let's put that a couple of places that we might have it, as you would. Okay. Just a few places. Keeping it jemmy. Not everywhere. Somewheres. Not everywhere. Somewheres. Somewhere over the rainbow There we go. Here we are. Looking good, looking good. How's it looking for you guys? Looks really good. A deeper, darker value. Deeper, darker value. Wolf says it's very important that you finish the painting today before you sign it. <laughs> don't don't sign it, then make changes today. Why don't change it after? Wherever it ends, it ends. It's true. Some, well, sometimes you go back and like, oh, but wait, there's more. Yeah, like at the end. <laughs> not sold in any store. <laughs> wait, there's more not sold in any store. So true. That's terrible, but true. All right, I've got some little light lavender here I'm putting up front. Paint a little bit of that little reflection. Isn't that nice. Uh, did, now. that that does bring it up. Does it? You know, it can feel like there's an emotional seal that happens when you sign it. Yeah. Can, <laughs> can you go back and revise a painting that you yes, like? Yes, please do. Sometimes like when, you sign it, you look at that thing for three months, and all of a sudden you go, "I know what I hate about it now." You can, and, you and it's it. okay to go back and like uh, read, yeah. just be like I unsign and There's refinish. There's no rule that says you cannot. That's kind. Of, I you know I hadn't really ever thought about that, but there is kind of that little bit of emotional catch of, I've signed it, it's done, I've emotionally put it aside now, and moved on. Well, I mean that's a that's a thing that happens, right? But you could get called back. This the the 
sultry song of the siren could pull you back into that painting. Let's take a little bit of our, <laughs> let's make some little, little popped reflections, shall we? <laughs> sure. Before the siren gets us. We're going to just go <laughs> to our ultramarine and our titanium white. Oh, those highlights really bring up, that makes the surface of the water dance. Yeah. It is a worthwhile endeavor. I like to do it. I like them through here quite a lot. the reflection of the, the boat. Oh, yeah. And the cool of that ultramarine really does some beautiful stuff. There's a lot of these little dashes. Don't be stressed about it. It's just, you're just dashing. Dash on, prancer, dance on, blitz and dashing reflections in your beach boat. Expression. All right, them back here because we we want to make sure these colors are through the painting, right? Very relaxing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Sometimes we hold our breath when we paint. It's important to remember to breathe, relax our muscles, unclench our jaw. And I'm just, I want you to do that. I want you to stretch your jaw mm. because you'll be biting the side of your cheek. You'll be biting your tongue. Some part of your body will get tense because you're highly focused. Every once in a while, let's remember to slow down and enjoy the reflection. We have to paint them anyways. We might as well enjoy the process of putting them in, and they might as well be healing. So in one, two, three. Out one, two. In one, two, three, out one, two, three. Just putting all those worries down. They don't exist here in your canvas at all. Whatever worries are in your life outside of this painting right now, they're not here. Just you in this ultramarine blue with a little bit of white. That's all that's needed. Making little dashes. Oh, right through there. From everywhere you feel like a little bit of light needs to sparkle, like the world's all full of glitter. Now, when we pull out, we're going to look at the paintings uh, kind of next to each other, because what's really interesting is that uh, that someone was asking, are the colors the same in the pa in the two paintings? And and they are. What what happens is is that you have uh, the colors haven't been adjusted. Uh, oh yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. So once once we turn back around and go forward, I can balance the camera so it's probably a little darker right. than the uh, reference image right now. Mm -hmm. But these colors are looking pretty good. They're looking pretty close on them. 
I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and white. I'm going to grab some water. This is my monogram liner. It's not my monogram liner. Silver brush is monogram liner, but it, I own this particular one. <laughs> Don't come in my studio and take it. Um, <gasps> oh, you are signing in there, aren't you? Now, I did notice that you used a, a bit more purple and on on the the live show than you did on the did study. No, I just get into it every time. Yeah, they all turn out a little different. Yeah, we're not copy machines. We're artists. And every time we come to a painting, we'll need something different out of it. And don't be fooled. The, the result of the painting is not why we get here. The reason that we're here is because we, as creatives, need this process, this layering of paint, this working out of our imaginative space to be one and whole. And the painting is a weird end result of that. It's so really interesting. Put them next to each other. We can. Yeah. And I will step out of the way. There we go, yeah. Not that different. <laughs> no, not at all. Sometimes things will feel different. Um, uh, Let me go over there too. Look at those. Yeah. Perspective and point of view is everything. When you're up close to something, it will feel one way. When you get back from something in your life and in your painting, Sometimes you need to take a step back and take it all in to see it uh, as it is because it's easy to get caught up in the minutia and the little brush strokes or a small area of your life or your painting. And that little chance to just step back and appreciate it and enjoy, it's everything. I hope you really love today. I want to send a lot of love and congratulations to my mom on her fabulous engagement. I'm big. Finding love at this point is just the most amazing thing ever, and I'm so personally grateful for it. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.